But then you actually watch yeah. that game. You know, that game's been repeated so many times. Even a priest I know in South Bend, Indiana, who's got a big fancy TV with uh, cable and stuff, or no, satellite, he watched that game. So the game got a lot of replay and everything. And I was there, and I have to tell you that it was exciting to the end. It was very hard. We have a new principal, Father Michael. And I was coaching him how what he has to do when he win. I have to go on the field and everything. But I was uncertain until the very end that, you know, we really actually won. And uh, two little side notes. Uh, I had a mass, the, the week of Thanksgiving we had a school mass. And that was the week of the playoffs where we had to play Steubenville. And uh, at the end of the Mass, before I gave the blessing, I said, I want to give a word to the varsity football team. And I said, you know, you already played Steubenville this season. And you won. And they're looking at each other because they did not play Steubenville during the season. They thought I was a little goofy. But the reason I, I said, yes, you did play Steubenville, because before the season began, Jerome Baker, our star player, and a star player from St. Edwards High School, came up with this idea of having high school athletes take a pledge against violence to women because of all the stuff that was going on in the NFL and Steubenville. And I said, when, when Jerome Baker and the kid from St. Ed started that pledge, I said, that's when you beat Steubenville. So it, it was kind of a nice touch, and then we went down there and actually played them and beat them. Right, you know, it was a big uh, that was a big uh, moment. And then the other one was after they won the state championship. I, I said to the f uh, football team, this was at the uh, sports banquet. We had the sports banquet. I said, you know, nobody's pointing this out, but there were seven championships, seven divisions now. Benedictine is the only one that beat a Catholic school. Because if you've been watching, all the public school coaches that are losing, they're all, you know, this isn't fair, they recruit, they get kids from all over, this and that. And, and I said, no one can say that to us, because we beat Archbishop Alter, a Catholic school, and they can't say that we had the advantage. By the way, uh, Father Euler's here. This, I don't know if you ever heard, this. this was a funny story. My Father Placid smiling over here from the magazine. Did you see 70 years of priest? Yeah. Most priests never make 50, and he's making 70. Oh, my God. And he wanted a party, too, and we did. <laughs> <laughs> it, was too close, it was too close to uh, Abbot Gary's big celebration, So, we, but he really he had invitations ready, he had a list and everything. But he, in 1949, was the athletic director. And Father Tully, what was his first name, Tully? The Walt or, or yeah. Ed? Brother. I think it's Ed Tully. Yeah, Ed. Ed Tully. He was the athletic director at Holy Name. Okay. And we had some kind of a recruiting scandal in the 40s about, I think, uh, 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 when they brought uh, Medich and that Schaefer, 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 they came from Pennsylvania and we had the boarding school or something like that. So I guess it was a thing we, in basketball or something, we were suspended for some games or something. Anyway, this is a story that Father Tully told me, or no, Father Placid, I think, told me. In the 50s, Father Placid was sent to Rome to study to be novice master for the monastery. And Father Tully, after he left Holy Name, went into the Navy as a chaplain. And one day his boat pulled into Rome for a, a, a you know, a onshore thing. And he said he met, Father Placid said he met him in St. Peter's Square. And what did Father Tully say? You damn Benedictines, you're even over recruiting over here now. <laughs> But uh, I, br I brought with me, beside that, if they, there's very nice shirts that have been made, sweatshirts. They're very heavy, they're, they're nice and warm. If anybody wants one here, they're, they're all 
I got my Uncle Marty one for his birthday, and I got my brother one. So I have some sizes here if you want to look at them, and uh, if not, you can always get them through the school. What the, our school has now, it has the shirts, and then it has the press on, and we make them to order. So they, they don't come like this. We just have the plain shirts, and then we put the press on. Isn't that nice? With the yeah. whole state of Ohio on there and everything. So if you're interested, I have some here. And there's one other style. This is the other style that they have. Also colorful and kind of nice. So if anybody wants one here. As cold as it is, Father, they might want to buy one just to yeah, get home. Yeah, just to get to your car <laughs> so you need an extra sweater. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, <clears throat> Last Saturday, you know, you have all these tests leading up to the kids picking their high school. And you start like in October, usually once a month or so. We had 85 kids take our test last Saturday, which was the highest number on a January test that we can remember. So, you know, does this give you a bump in enrollment? Sometimes. You know, it's not a magic thing, but it shows people that you're alive and kicking and that, you know, you're, 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 doing the best, you're, you're, you're producing the best. So at least right now, we don't know until kids start making their choices and they get their financial aid packages, but if we get another 120 kids, freshmen, we'll be pushing, getting kind of toward 450, which is a nice enough number to have nowadays to do that. And uh, um, Father was commenting about the magazine, uh, the, or at Labor Magazine. I enjoy writing because I'm an English teacher. And if you read my story about the two boys from Avon that took care of the, the black kid, uh, Dave Porter, who's at uh, John Carroll, which amazed me because I've been to George's Parish. I've been there 35 years. And it's an area that is not doesn't look like the inner city at all. <laughs> and when I found out that two boys were coming to Benedictine. I didn't push it. I talk about Benedictine there. I irritate the Ignatius and Inns guys all the time. <laughs> oh, here, this is, here's a funny one. You'll like this one. So it, at, at Holy Trinity there, that's a growing parish. There's like 600 kids in the grade school, I think 500, 600 kids. Oh now. And, but they're all, a lot of them are all, you know, Ed's Ignatius, Ed's Ignatius. And there's a literary Catholic on the side too. So, uh, the pastor had the, has the habit of, when the CYO season is going on, that all the football players come in their jerseys at the 9 o'clock mass and sit as a team. And then after communion, Father Masenko, the pastor, gets up there and gives them a little pep talk before the end of the mass. Well, this one week, uh, he wasn't there. I had the mass. He was out of town. He was on vacation. So I'm trying to think what to say before the communion. Well, what happened was th three days earlier, in, I, I went down the hallway. I, we have a little conference room, and I have a refrigerator there. And I keep, you know, the Arnold Palmer, the, the, the iced tea and that. thing? I like that. So I get a, a jug of it. It's in the refrigerator. So I go down to the, the conference room to get it. And I walk in, and there's our coach Schaefer with some other guy. And I walked in. and. Schaefer says, oh, Father, have you ever met Urban Meyer? It was Ohio State coach Urban Meyer. So, you know, I'm standing there shaking hands with him. I said, well, coach, I've seen you on TV, but, you know, you don't, you, when you see somebody famous in person, it strikes you right away. So it was real nice. He, says to, he said to me, well, Father, I'm a product of Catholic schools. I went to St. John's High School in Astrabula, and my son goes to Bishop Watterson in Columbus. He's a freshman. We could just beat Bishop Watterson, but I don't want to bring that up. <laughs> and uh, he they asked me, what schools did you go to? Well, I told him I went to Bowling Green, and then I went to Notre Dame uh, in Indiana for a, a summer of a, a theology degree. So he says, Father, you know, Notre Dame offered me the job there twice, head coach. But I didn't take it because my wife said she never wanted to live in South Bend. <laughs> <laughs> I've, a lot of people said they never knew that he was offered the job at Notre Dame twice. So anyway, this was three days later at Holy Trinity, Sunday Mass. 
So I'm trying to think of what to say. I says, I know I'm going to get I'm going to get these Ignatius and his people all bent out of shape. So I got up and I said, Well, you know, team, your father Masenko, the pastor, isn't here today to give you the pep talk. But I had Urban Meyer in my office this week, and I put in a good word for you guys. So if any of you get phone calls this week, you know, you know, put in a good word for you. That's all I said. I said no. Well, I heard from four different people that after that mass, the Eds and Ignatius people said, did you hear what he said? What the, what the hell is Bourbon Meyer doing at Benedicta? What's he doing at Benedicta? I mean, it killed them that he wasn't stopping and looking at their athletes. He came because he wanted to talk to um, uh, our, our junior, Lane, 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 uh, Justin Lane, because Justin Lane is fr is good friends with Jerome Baker, and Jerome Baker made this big thing, he's going to go to Florida and all. Well, he was smart. He came and he talked to Justin Lane about coming to Ohio State, and three weeks later, the other one changed his mind. So that's why he was there. But I laughed because I've heard from a number of people. Somebody was at Walmart. They said, somebody came up to him. Did you hear Father Gerard Sunday? He said, Urban Meyer was at Benedict. What's he doing at that school? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice that, you know, we, we got some notoriety from, from all that. And, uh, oh yeah, so that article, the article about the two boys. Did, did everybody read that? I mean, it was two boys that came from Avon. And they met uh, David Porter, an uh, African-American kid who was living on the near west side. And they offered him a ride every day to football practice. And then uh, David Porter's father had a bad heart condition. And they couldn't pay the rent or whatever. We were living on the near west side. So they had to move in with an aunt in Lorraine. And he was only a junior. And he really wanted to stay at Benedictine. And he didn't know, how am I going to get to Benedictine from Lorraine? Well, the two boys from Avon said, if you can get yourself to Avon, we'll get you to Benedictine every day. So they, they were driving him, and they became friends. And then his father got worse, and they had like a hospital bed and stuff at home. And he was telling them how hard it is to study with all this going on at home. So the two Avon boys invited them to live with them. They took turns, one month at a time. He was living with them and going to school, and that kept his grades up. And his father died. And I went to the funeral in Lorraine at a little church, and I was surprised to see these two families from Avon there. What do you, you know, what do you do? Well, we're good friends. We got to know him through football. Well, I didn't know the whole story, you know, that they had actually invited him to live in their house and all. And David Porter got a scholarship to John Carroll, and he's an accounting major, and he's very good on their football team. And he came back for the graduation of these other two boys this past May. So just to show you how things can travel at Christmas time. So the night on Christmas Eve, I'm working on my homily for Holy Trinity, the two masses on Christmas Day. And I had a homily ready, but something inside of me was saying, why don't you use that story of the two boys? Because a lot of the people at Holy Trinity don't know that that happened. But then on the other hand, when you're at a church sometimes, as Father Carl would say, you don't like to mention family names on the pulpit because then people get jealous. Why is he mentioning this family and that family? But finally, I said, I'm going to do it because those are kids. These are high school kids. If anybody don't like it, too bad. I'm going I'm to mention the family names. So I told the story. So after Mass, a guy comes in the sacristy. I don't know. But, uh, why don't you just hold that? Which beat my record. <laughs> because I had a seven thousand dollar homily. Oh. A couple years back, I, I took my I used to take my mother banking to Third Federal Savings at Southgate, and we went there one day. Home field. San Ignatius. Ignatius does not have one either. Saint Edwards. I can't remember. It's been so long I've been in Cleveland. Edwards doesn't have one. Ignatius doesn't have one. Wow. Just a practice field. Practice field. But this practice field, this Basu field that we built, is really doing a nice job in attracting people to the campus. We use it for, we, there's CYO teams that play there. Jesu was out there this year, and the parents were very impressed to see how the, that backyard. A lot of people, they don't know we have that big backyard, you know. 
and uh, we were getting nice crowds. Our freshman football team played their games there, and they were undefeated until the last game. They lost to Archbishop Hoven, and they had the quarterback was out, and, an, and another guy on the line was out that made it difficult. But we were getting nice crowds for freshman football, and, and we put stands in. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen that field, all you got to do is drive in the big parking lot and go over there and look. But originally, we weren't going to put stands in because it's a practice field. But we were getting so many people coming, they were bringing folding chairs, and it's dangerous on the side of the hill. So there was a, that was 90,000 we didn't count on, but we put in a nice set of seats. That's and a lot of people come now to watch these. And lacrosse is very popular. Our lacrosse team is very good. And that they, they, their schedule is in the spring. And they went into playoffs the last two years. So when you get to playoffs, then a lot of grandparents come and parents come and everything. So that practice field has really gotten a, a good, uh, good use so far. And we still have a baseball team. Yes, we do. Okay. But I tease the baseball team. Because the last time I think we won any kind of like regional title or something was 86 or something or, or earlier than that. It's been a long time. You, you have good baseball teams and then the baseball problem is the tournaments start before the, before the season ends. So they don't have a season and then postseason play. Toward the end of the season, they'll say that game is a tournament game and if you lose, there's no sense playing the rest of your schedule because you're out. And we always seem to get tripped up somewhere in one of those. And, and high school baseball is tough in this area because half your games are rained out and everything. The nice thing is due to our alumnus, Nabi Lewandowski, class of 55, we don't have to deal with Woodland Hills Park because Nabi Lewandowski is a graduate of Case and they approached him uh, to uh, Gary Piller, my classmate, Don's nephew, works in the development office there. They approached him to build a new baseball field for Case, because he played baseball there. And he did build the field for Case with the provision that Benedictine could use it. So we've been lucky we could go down there and that field's in very good shape, you know, compared to Woodland Hills Park. By the time they get that thing working, it'd be June already, you know, so. But, Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you. So if you ever have business, take it to Third Federal. It was nice. So anything else? Anybody want to know anything that's going on currently? Yeah, Father, got any other football players? The Browns are sure in need of them. Quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing great. It's, a, it's a good that we had championship. It feels good to have our team on top again. Well, you year. know, when we won the state championship in, in uh, let's see, what, I don't know if it was in 96 or 2003, the Browns were bad then, and there was an editorial cartoon in the Plain Dealer showing the Benedictine Bengals and Ignatius, like, taking over the Browns team. I remember we have it somewhere at our school. It was the same situation. Do you, have you seen that lady that's got the sweatshirt that has all the names of the quarterbacks of the last 15 years on? And she keeps sewing on another one. <laughs> so she's got to do another one again. Those of you who know our, our brother Patrick, I don't know if you know, our token Irishman we had at the Benedictine for years, Patrick Ryan. He joined the monastery in the 50s and he used to work at and the school in maintenance and that. He's pretty close to death, he's 83. He's out at the Regina Health Center and he's got a tumor. So you can keep Brother Patrick Ryan in your prayers out there. Aside from that, um, I don't know, anything else I could think of. But <coughs> nice to pop up. I try, keep trying to take Father Timothy with me. But you guys gotta work out on yourself. I talked to him at the uh I did, I did dishes with them this morning. I says, you know, your gang from the 60s is out there. Well, just tell them I said hello. You know, I can't get them, so. Well, now he's at, the, he's at the nursing home now. He is? Yeah, father, I know. Yeah, my father Joe Kim is also. Um, once again, I would yeah, I cut, that, cut the camera there. The thing with people like Agi Basu and, the, and Mr. Rufus and all of the 
all the priests and the lay people. Uh, and to, just to come here and sit and listen to some of the stories has been fantastic. Within the last year it was, uh, one of the fellows, Tony Russ, retired from Benedictine and, and they asked me to be an MC, so I went. And then through the course of it, we explained how Tony got to be the coach that he was and everything, why he went back to Benedictine from St. Lawrence at the University of Cincinnati. Because when he was at Benedictine, he heard Joe Rufus. Ha ah, fellas, how about I here, fellas? I went back at 48, fellas. Ah, ah. We didn't have tackling dummies, fellas. Ah, I was a tackling dummy. That's why, right, fellas. You had to be tough. And so we did that, and I explained how Tony was impressed with that, how he went back and became a teacher, and became a coach, and became an athletic director. And he was never happy in that retirement. They said, how come you never got happy doing all this stuff? He says, all I ever wanted to be was a tackling dummy. <laughs> but Joe's son was there in the audience that day, and he came up afterwards, and he says, oh, geez, that was very nice that you did that. And I was like, well, if I'd have known you were there, I wouldn't have done it at all. <laughs> but then I said, you know, out of four years at Benedictine, I can only remember one lecture, and it was Joe Rufus, and that was in civics class. And if you remember, he probably had the same book, because I think it was printed in 1922. <laughs> but there was a picture of a wagon wheel, old-time wagon wheel. And in civics, he explained that the spokes were the executive, the legislative, the judicial, for local, county, state, federal, and those were the spokes in the wheel. But it was the hub, the hub that was everything. And that's when Joe Rufus became very passionate, because the hub was the family. And without the family, the wheel cannot go around. And I look at the news today and I see what's going on, and I have to believe that the hub is broken in a lot of places. Oh, yeah. But thank you, Joe Rufus. We have the same priests and teachers, okay? But we have a lot of memories that go back. And I mean, it's just, that's why we're here. We all share that. That's what the whole thing is all about. And I can just remember, like, well, Father Damien, bless his soul. Latin, if you remember when we oh, were back in the boy. 60s, you had to take two years of Latin. And I said, my God, I said, my class, if you read three, uh, two, four words of Latin, you got a D minus. If you translate it, you got a D plus. So for us, that was good, because we took two years of Latin. <laughs> then Father Damien, I remember, he says, okay, Taylor, give me a few sentences. What do you think about the uh, Latin language? I said, hey, Vince, what am I going to tell you? And he says, well, you're on your own. <laughs> so I had to think of something on the spot. So I said, okay, Father David. I says, here's it, what I think of Latin. Latin is a subject, as dead as it may be. It once killed the Romans, and now it's killing me. <laughs> 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 so he threw his, uh, his book up, pencil, he says, see you guys tomorrow morning. He says, bye, Father. <laughs> but we had some good memories, and a lot of them with him. And that's what we're sharing here today, and I hope you guys do it too. You know, uh, the, the, the Advent uh, gets Christmas cards from a lot of people, and Advent Roger started the thing of hanging them in the hallway outside the Abbot's office. So Abbot Gary's got them all hanging there, and I was laughing because some guy sent a Christmas card, and in it he put a picture of him and Father Anthony in chemistry class. And I just looked at that, and I could remember who had anybody remember Father Anthony? Yeah. Hey, yeah. genius! Yeah, you're a stupid genius! Well, you idiot, you know what you're doing! Come on, genius! And it hit you in the head and everything. But the guy actually put this picture in his Christmas card. He said that the memory of the chemistry. Pardon? His father also Father Anthony? What? His biology. No, Rayfield. Father Anthony, I have to say one. <laughs> Those must have been the days when they just made people teach if they needed them to teach somehow. Because he, he was a chemist, uh, but his background right. was. Yeah. 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 Too. Yeah. yeah, he was also Father Basil was a chemist. Well, we have all memories of the teachers we had, you know? <laughs> and it's so great because you could just all focus back. You know what I mean? And like even one more, a father Tom is the little short guy. Yeah. We had him for yeah. mechanical drawing yeah. and we had him for aeronautics, I believe. And he says, I got your guy for aeronautics for what? Oh he said, Well, he says you're gonna be the special forces. I said, Oh.
Well, I am Joe Serini. I'm class of 1960. Um, I guess uh, I really enjoyed my time at Benedictine, and it helped me get to, to Kent State University and through it. Um, believe it or not, I taught at Maslin Washington High School for 30 years, and was so proud to see my Benedictine Bengals come out on the field in 1957. Well, I didn't see that because I didn't get there until 1960, but uh, I was always proud to see our boys come out and play. I was proud of, proud of both my boys, the boys of Benedictine and the boys uh, from Maslin, but uh, it was really a neat time, and uh, I really remember my high school days and enjoy and, and uh, being proud of uh, being a Benedictine Bengal. You live in Canton, Ohio? I live in Canton, Ohio now, that's right. Uh, two girls, yep, I have two girls, um, and um, they're both through college, and I just retired last year, but uh, it's hard getting used to it. I'm Joe Franchino. I graduated from Benedictine in 1962. A lot of fond memories. Uh, married in 83. Wife's name is Marlene. Uh, she went to Normandy High School and uh, met her at work at CEI. I uh, worked there for 26 years. Uh, I have several hobbies. I collect old bottles and I metal detect. Uh, had a good four years at Benedictine. A member of the teachers, a lot of good friends, uh, a few that are no longer with us. Uh, my, my fondest memories of teachers were Mr. Basu, and we had just talked a little while at a little meeting with Joe Rufus, wonderful man. He used to give those heartfelt speeches at halftime when we were losing. I think our freshman team, our JV team, was terrible, and he'd come in for some support. And, and no matter what he said, we just somehow just didn't have it, but he was a great guy. Uh, played football with his son, Joe Jr., who's, who's passed away, I believe. But uh, uh, appreciated going there. Didn't realize what a good school it was until I was out of there and had uh, a chance to uh, go to other schools <coughs> and have friends go, children go to the school and find out that truly they made men uh, of uh, Benedictine, truly, truly champions. That's really about it. Okay, I'll take another email.